a smart person learns from the mistakes of themselves, but a wise person learns from the mistakes of others. I have made mistakes in my life that I've learned from, and I've also not made certain mistakes in my life that my friends have made or my parents have made that I've learned from as well. I am telling you from experience, I think I have not enough experience that you don't have to go through this to learn this. Don't be running back, don't be acting crazy, don't be throwing fits, it don't work. I'm telling you, it doesn't work in a healthy situation. And at the end of the day, we want healthy. We want healthy dynamics that are genuine and true and, and, and respectable to ourselves and our self-worth. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going on. Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. Okay, so this is probably the first time that I've been called to make a video like this. Oh shoot, hold on, my dryer's going, hold on one sec. Okay, sorry, I'm back. So I've been pretty much called, I've been summoned to do this video, and honestly, I've gotten DMs for years similar to today's topic, and I feel like I am finally ready to do a full video dedicated to this because I've accumulated enough knowledge in my own personal journey of growing and becoming the woman that I wanna be and the woman that I desire to be that I think that I can give the most sound advice for this particular topic, which is essentially how to move on from somebody that you want to be with so bad, somebody that you love so much, and a lot of the times someone that you feel like you have like a story that is to be continued with. Um, a lot of the times, you know, things end abruptly or weird and you're confused and picking up the pieces and I want to kind of shed light on some of these experiences so that you can, I guess, understand why, how, and what exactly to do when these situations do occur in your life because they are kind of heartbreaking and they're difficult and they're not easy to manage and I think that in all of the years that I've been living and all of the years that I've been dating, essentially, because I've been dating for a long time, I think I have enough information regarding this topic. So we're gonna just get into it. Essentially, a girl DM'd me on Instagram. I screenshotted it and put it in my notes and I took out some parts that were a little bit personal, but for the most part, I have all of her DM. I'm gonna read it to you guys so that you guys can really understand why we're talking about this topic and how I essentially can help so don't forget to like comment share and subscribe as always and um, yeah guys let's just get into the video hey girl I need advice I just want to start by saying that I watch your videos religiously and I genuinely am so grateful for everything that you put out I can relate to you in so many ways it's scary I was also in a long-term relationship for many years and when it ended I also felt at peace and free my newest dilemma is this boy that I've been in love with for a few months I can't seem to get over him despite the fact that I believe it's over between the two of us I am not one to fall in love easily, and he came into my life when I least expected it. I was a little closed off in the beginning to dating because I was in the midst of a healing journey. I didn't want to get heavily involved with anyone at the time, so for the simple fact that I was just working on myself, I didn't really want to be with him that bad. He was very persistent and sure of me, and it was kind of refreshing to have someone say things like, I knew you were the one when I saw you, I fall for you more and more each day. And the list goes on of mind-blowing things that he would say to me. I was slowly growing feelings for him, and I think he sensed I was starting to warm up to the idea of being together. We spent a few months together, and things moved extremely fast. I was saying I love you to him, telling my friends and family that he was the one, and to be honest, this isn't like me. I don't do things like that because I know how things are with guys, but with him, it felt different, like everything he said was true. Circumstances changed after three months. She told me what the circumstances were, but I didn't want to include them because messy, like very messy and not really productive to this conversation. And he started to switch up. I wasn't mad at him because I knew the reason for his mood change. There was really nothing I could do about it because it was his own personal struggles and I genuinely couldn't fix. All I could do was be there for him. He eventually called me and told me that we should break up because he's not in the place in his life where a girlfriend is necessary. I understood him because although I was in love with him, everything he said to me on that phone call did make sense. I decided to distance myself from him and mourn the loss of what we had, but now I'm confused and trying to pick up the pieces of exactly what the point of it was. I did notice that he started to see somebody else. It doesn't seem like it's super relationship-like, but it is noticeable that he is seeing someone. I still love him and want him, and to be honest, I don't even have an issue with him right now other than the fact that he has moved on so quickly. I'm more mad at how it ended. I want to call him and beg for him back, but I know it's not possible. So my question is, how do you get over someone that you want so bad? I am really at a loss because I have never felt so hopeless before. So that was her story, essentially. I understand and feel your pain. As somebody who has dated a lot, um, I would say my last relationship doesn't really hold this much 
pain because it was a very understood breakup. But when I was younger, um, I experienced some really heartache and some hard breakups. I, I really did because I wasn't done with that person yet. Like I felt like we didn't have enough time together. I felt like there wasn't enough data that I collected. I, I was constantly picking up the pieces of what, what, what was it? Um, how do I move forward? Do I want to contact this person? Do I think that we should give it another chance? All of those things. And the one saying that I actually got from a pastor who I watch here on YouTube and I watch him religiously um, because I think that he, he has really helped me in my healing journey and my singleness in my relationship part of my life in so many different stages of my journey in becoming the woman I am today, um, Pastor R.C. Blakes has really helped me. And one of the things that he said in a recent video that really struck me was, you're gonna have to experience pain, right? So you can experience the pain of holding on to someone that is no longer in your life and is dead essentially in your life. This person doesn't hold any weight in your life. You're not gonna be with this person. So you can deal with the pain that you don't have this person and, and, and have that be what you wanna feel or you can deal with the pain of letting them go. Choose your pain, choose your heart. And I think that it's easier said than done, of course. I think that a lot of us are always wanting to hold on because when somebody pulls away from us, it's just natural, especially if we've made this person our home, we made this person our, our everything, our world. We want to hold on to them because we're so afraid of what life will be like without them, right? But I think that First and foremost, to go back to your statement, I think you should be really appreciative, and, and this is not me slighting your feelings at all, but it's really just a beautiful thing because I know people who haven't experienced this and they've experienced different types of detachment styles from men, so this is pretty decent. You should be appreciative of the fact that he communicated to you that you know, he does still care for you, but he does want to break up and wants to move in a different direction in his life because in my personal opinion, when a man this is himself from you after he's going through something really difficult. It's his way of like respecting you and also knowing that he can't run game on you. This girl that he's involved with right now, we don't know who she is. We don't know the kind of boundaries and standards and morals that she holds. She very well might be okay with him not being his best version of himself. She very well may be okay with the fact that he is not being faithful or loyal to her and he's not respecting her. Um, because you have held the standard so high and he put you on a pedestal from the very beginning, he might have just realized she is not the one that I can do this to. And I'll explain even more. I have met so many people who have wasted months and years dealing with someone. Um, there was somebody that I knew many years ago who um, was in a relationship with a guy for many years and he was they were going through this this never ending like merry-go-round of nonsense like i'm talking breakup makeup cheating deceit lies and it was like a never-ending cycle and he was just always you know treating her like crap and i think a part of me at the time was like oh but like you know at least you know they've they've gone the distance at least that they've you know cleaned it up and made it work and then you know every time i would say that then something bad would happen to them again and i think that there is such a disservice done to women where a lot of us are being lied to or treated badly and us staying and holding on because that's what we you know, sometimes want to do because we love this person ends up taking away years from our own lives and our youth and our growth and our healing when what we could have done was walked away when we were no longer being respected and treated the way we were supposed to be and possibly meeting somebody better or possibly just focusing on ourselves. And something I've learned about men, and I'm so grateful, so grateful to have men in my life that have guided me through this process of how men think because we as women, we just don't think like men. We just don't. And it's so difficult to really get into the minds of someone who we once cared for or loved if they feel differently now or they're treating you different because you're trying to figure out like, is it me? Am I the problem? What could I have done differently? And in reality, it's really not. I mean, it can be you know, partially your fault, but for the most part, it's really them. There's a series of things that could be going on through a guy's brain. One being he's genuinely not ready to be in a committed relationship with somebody of your stature. A lot of times when men detach themselves from you in a respectful way where they say, I can't be with you anymore, I'm so sorry, da, 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 and they know that they can't get sex out of you, they know they can't call you late at night, they know that they can't come running back and spin in the block every five seconds because they are not sure of themselves. In a way, it's almost as if they view you as 
too good for that. And I'm gonna explain why I feel this way because honestly, I think it, it will really help some people. When I was younger, when I was in high school, I was a hopeless romantic and I was also extremely toxic in a lot of my relationships. And um, a huge thing that I would do was I would fight for the guys that I wanted to be with. And I had this boyfriend in high school who didn't really love me. I, I've talked about him in previous videos, but he did not love me like at all, <laughs> like at all. Like he had a crush on somebody else. I think that he wanted to love me or he, you know, thought I was a great girl, but, but didn't have those feelings for me. And the truth of the matter is, is I would act crazy when we would break up and he would take me back because, you know, it was, I mean, I'm not saying he would take me back right away, but he would spin the block because he knew he could, because he knew the kind of girl I was. I was somebody who would take him back immediately and oh my God, yeah. And then there was a guy that I dated after him who I dated for two years. He totally like did something very nasty to me in our breakup. And years later, and this is kind of comedy a little bit, he actually, he's been blocked like all these years. And he reached out to Asia, out of all people, and said, hey, like I would love to, you know, hang out with Haley if you can get a hold of her for me. And he was like a major narcissist. I don't feel sorry for him at all. Um, he just doesn't know this version of me. He doesn't know the version of me that literally moves on my life. I think that he was so used to me being so crazy for him and running back to him whenever we would get into a fight. And if he met a girl, I would pull him right back, please. Like, so when he reached out to her, and this was literally as recent as like a couple months ago, he doesn't know that I'm not the girl that you can do that to anymore. So the guys that I date have dated recently, the guys that I have been with in, in my single journey, they didn't do stuff like that because they know Haley's really not the type that I can go running back to and spin the block and you know because the truth of the matter is when a good woman is hurt by a man the the initial response as a woman is to fight for it I get it we all want to right we all want to fight for what we love and what we care for but when you're being told by someone I don't want to be with you or you're not the one for me or I'm not sure of us and you walk away with dignity and your head held high I don't know I think that it's just a different level of self-love I think when you love yourself so freaking much and I'm not saying you have to love yourself to to do this you can actually try to love yourself every day it doesn't have to be something you have immediately like oh my god I'm so confident and I have super incredible self-love because it didn't always start from that point for me Whenever I had to actually move on and hold my head high, I was faking it till I made it. I was literally telling myself every day, good women don't run back to a guy that's not treating them right. Good women don't settle. Good women don't chase. And, and at the end of the day, when you move on with your life, and I mean, you have to actually move on. We're not moving on and checking our stories to see if they're watching us. We're not moving on and trying to get them back or posting sexy pictures on the gram so that they can see how good you're doing. No, I mean like actually moving on. I mean, you are moving on with your life like you were supposed to, like intended to be. And a lot of times if this man is the one for you, now don't get excited. Don't get excited because I don't want you guys getting excited. But if this guy really is the guy for you, the guy that you, you believe is, is your person, and he did this bullshit to you, and he was unsure of you, and he wasn't sure what he wanted to do with you, if you really truly move on, his heart will, will break. His heart will, his heart will eventually yearn for you back. Think about it. If a man who you treated like garbage and was toxic to and begged and pleaded spins the block, imagine a guy spinning the block for a woman that actually behaved normally and behaved as if their value was so much more significant than the loss of this relationship it's so painful to go through this right something i've learned in breakups is you have to go through them you can't go around them and i've learned that through my friendships and you know my friendships have taught me this and and you know different conversations i've had with people is you got to go through it, not around it. Every time you go around it, God will just teach you the lesson again and you're going to keep learning it until you get it. And it's hard. There are seven stages of grief, you know, and I actually have them written down. I can read them to you because you're going to go through these stages of grief when you're healing and it's going to be difficult. The first stage is shock. When you first experience, you know, this loss, 
of a human being that you once thought was your person, you're gonna be shocked. You're gonna probably have no nothing to say. And the second is denial because you're not, you know, believing that this really just happened to you. The third is anger. Normal, you should be angry if somebody is, you know, walking out your life. You know, you you hold yourself to a high value, you're upset, you're like, what the hell? How could you walk out of my life? Look at all I've given to you. You know, you've you've invested probably time, money, and energy into this person. Being angry is normal. The fourth is bargaining, which is essentially you trying to tell yourself that you could have did things differently, you could do things differently now, maybe you should reach out, whatever, which don't, but that's a part of grief. Um, the fifth is depression. I'm not like encouraging for people to be depressed, but it's a sad thing. Losing a person is like a death. Losing a, a partner is like a death. You have to literally go through it, and a part of that is being extremely sad. It is. The sixth is testing. You know, this is where you're kind of getting to a place where, you know, you're, you're moving on, but uh, some parts of you, sometimes that, that memory does come back and you get sad again. So it's kind of like you're walking that fine line of acceptance, but also um, still being depressed or hurting. And then the seventh stage of grief is acceptance, is accepting the fate of the relationship, accepting that this person is no longer for you and that's okay. A huge part of moving forward is understanding that there was nothing that you could have done differently, nothing. Seeking closure isn't even really necessary because I think closure in itself is a way for you to kind of like have a glimmering of hope. And don't get me wrong, I've gotten closure many times in my life, even when I knew I was gonna move on because I genuinely wanted it. Sometimes you want answers so that you can grow as a person. I mean, I don't think you should take another person's view of you to the highest of highs, but if you had respect for this person and you really wanna know, hey, what really happened, what really went wrong, go ahead and do it, but don't seek closure with the idea that this might bring you guys closer together or that you can convince this person to be with you because you literally can't. You can't convince anybody to want you or to be with you. You just cannot. I'm a strong believer in saying what you need to say but then literally moving forward with your life. There is nothing sexier and more profound than a woman who holds themselves to a standard of saying, you said you don't want me? Cool, bye. And I'm not saying that you actually feel that way inside. You could be dying on the inside. I know so many women who are really good at detaching. You know, they've, they've dealt with a man who they really loved, they cared for, and this person eventually let them down, and they had no choice but to move on. I mean, I'm learning this as I get older. It's not something that I was good at um, when I was younger. I would hope, wish, and pray for this person back. I would I would do a million different things to, to, to get this person to think of me, or, and the truth is, you can't. They're going to eventually, but you can't force it. I do believe, and I saw this on TikTok actually recently, that men are like rubber bands. The more that you, you, know, you, you expand it and pull away, th then eventually it's gonna snap and they're gonna come back, right? But if, you, if they're pulling away and you're kind of moving closer, they're just gonna keep pulling away. Like, it's just never going, to, you're never gonna get what you want out of chasing this person down. So when she said, I wanna call him, I wanna see what's up, no, do not call him. Don't drunk call him, don't text him, don't bother him, literally leave him alone. Like I have never gotten anything good come out of me chasing a man down. And I'm not gonna sit here and say I haven't, I have. I've done it a million times in my life. It's never a positive outcome. So I'm not going to tell you to do it because why would I tell you to do something that isn't positive? I also want to address the part where you brought up how everything moved quickly and he was you know saying i love you very fast and things like that something i've also learned as an adult is love is patient and love is reassuring i do believe in love at first sight i've talked about it in a previous video i do believe that you can meet someone and it's like as if your life didn't your, your previous life didn't even exist right in a way it's kind of a beautiful experience but love is patient and love is reassuring if you have questions, if you feel like you're not getting the answers that you deserve and desire, if you're being an afterthought, if you are being considered an option, I mean, at this point, you know, he broke up with you, he told you, I don't wanna be with you anymore. That is not a reassuring thing. 
That is not the love that you seek. And that's not to take away from the fact this person did love you. I think a lot of us have this obsession with, did they really love me? Did he really? Maybe he did at the time. Maybe he did. If you felt it, believe your intuition. I think usually when we get older, we can kind of tell when people love us. Unless they're like a really good liar or like really good at faking emotions. But I believe eyes don't lie. So when somebody looks at you a certain way, words... You have to be careful with words, but if they're matching the actions, then okay, that's a, that's a good sign. Um, and just trusting your gut. If you really feel like this person loved you or, or loves you, believe that. I don't think you should obsess over, do they? I don't know, maybe they don't, all of these things. It's just right now, they can't. And you should be very appreciative and happy that this person isn't wasting years of your life to essentially waste your time. When somebody detaches from you and no longer wants to be with you, if anything, that's the best thing they could have done for you. There are too many people out there who have relationships that are long-term where the person is essentially wasting their time, is not giving them what they really desire, and you might love them, but the truth of the matter is, is they have no eagerness to really marry you or go anywhere with you. So if anything, somebody making a decision uh, prematurely or, or quickly is better than somebody not making a decision too late because your youth is, is, is important. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, I know I have so many different ages that watch my um, videos and just so you know, I know so many people who have found love again after 30, after 40, after 50. So it's always possible and it, and it will happen for you if that's what you want. But what I'm trying to say is don't let somebody take years away from your life um, because you are afraid of losing them. There is so much growth in pain and there's so much growth in, in healing. And I think that even for me, Whenever I look back at the experiences I had when I was a teenager and I would chase a guy and I would beg for him and I like I look back and I'm like, my God, like it's so sad, Haley. He, he like how pathetic. Like I never look back and go, oh my god, that was so funny. I would totally do that again. Like, no, I'm embarrassed. I could have spent that time focusing on myself, spending more time with my girlfriends. I could have spent it, you know, meeting a, a guy who actually really liked me or cared for me. You know, I was chasing guys that were taken that were not mine anymore. You know, I was, I was, I remember my birthday came around and I had an ex-boyfriend and you know, he was a very interesting ex, right? He didn't like me or want me, but he would always want to show up in places that I was at. You always want to see what I'm up to. It's like a, a common theme of my life, right? Where they're very intrigued as to what Haley Gamba is doing, but they don't actually want anything to do with Haley Gamba. <laughs> this is very odd. But um, I had an ex-boyfriend, he showed up to my birthday. I'm thinking, why are you even here? My one friend threw me a party, he showed up, he was there for like a few minutes, him and I got into an argument in the backyard, I'll never forget it, and he left, and I got an argument because, you know, he ended up screwing one of his neighbors and um, started dating her, and we had just broken up, so I was like, oh my god, like, why do you share this with me? Oh, I don't care because I don't want to be with you, blah, blah, it's like, well then why are you here? And it's like, I was literally crying and pleading with a man that had zero respect for me, had no like desire to really give me his best self. And I'm not even angry at him. We were so young. We were so young, obviously at the time. But there's nothing worse than being with a guy who fakes a future with you because he's pretending that he's ready for you. So if anything, look at it as a sign. When somebody detaches from you early, it's A, they, they don't wanna be with you. B, they're not ready to be with you. C, they got something going on in their life that makes them not be able to be with you. And D, it wasn't meant to be. Nothing meant for you is gonna be removed from you. And I can't stand when I get all these like DMs from people saying like, oh, I don't wanna talk about anything that I have that happens to me that's good because of voodoo, people are gonna put spells on it. No, babe, what's meant for you is for you. God is powerful, more powerful than any of that voodoo crap. Um, if something is for you, it's gonna be for you. Nobody can take from you what is meant for you. Period, end of story. So if this man wants nothing to do with you or something removed him from your life, I don't know, whatever circumstances it could be, the best way to move on with your life is to literally move on with your life. You are going to be sad. You are going to cry. You are going to feel confused. You are going to be mad. You're going to experience jealousy when he gets involved with somebody else. It's normal, it's natural. But I'm telling you from experience and from just knowing other people, there's only a few ways that this really ends. It's either they're gonna come back better than ever, that's like the best case scenario, right? They're gonna come back better than ever and then you get to make the choice of whether you wanna take them back or not. And I would say go into it cautiously. Um, but there's a lot of people that I know who have broken up or split up 
the person needed to focus on themselves, whatever person that was, and they came back better and was more sure of that person and that other person, you know, slowly but surely gave back in or they spin the block and you don't want to be with them because you realize, wait a second, this person isn't even for me. I'm not, I, I'm not even who I was when I was with this person because honestly, you really don't know what kind of person, you know, you're going to be in the next few months. So in the next few months, you might not even want this person at all. Number three is you move on and find somebody better. And then all of that, that, that happened is a grateful experience because you're like, wait, that prepared me for this. You know, like my seven year relationship with Alex prepared me for my dating. Now it has prepared me in more. I have looked so inward. I have healed. Like when I was dating him and this is sidebar, I know I'm talking a lot in this video, but I think it's important when I dated him, I needed to spend every single waking moment with him for years, right? Cause we were very young when we got together. We were 17 and I wanted to spend every waking moment with him. And then I realized um, the more years we spent together that I wanted to kind of pull away. And it was really difficult for us because we were so used to our routine of always being on top of each other that us doing other things was difficult for each other to grasp and understand. So I have understood that in my now dating life, I want some distance between me and my person. I want some distance. I don't want to see you every day. I don't want to talk to you every five seconds. I want space. And that was something that I had to learn. So I think that the best thing sometimes in learning is nobody is, is, is put in your life by accident. Souls are never meant to meet by accident. It's either going to be a lesson or a blessing. I've said this in a million videos and it's so true. Like you, can always find a lesson in everything that you've experienced in life. And then, you know, the fourth thing is for whatever reason, they don't come back. And we're not, again, we're not banking on them coming back. I'm just telling you that that's eight out of 10, 8.5 out of 10 times what happens. Cause men are just very simple creatures and I know how they operate. You know, they, they move on with their lives. You move on with your life and you know, you learned a lot about yourself from this experience. I think that the biggest lesson in a breakup that I have learned is the power of loving yourself more than loving anyone else for years because of my big empathetic, I guess, journey. I'm, I'm super empathetic. I have so much love to give all my friends know this about me guys. I've dated know this about me. I'm just such a giver that I want to return that love back to myself. I have, that was what I spent a lot of my journey in singleness doing was returning that love back to me because I gave out all of my love that when I got broken up with in the past, I was like, I didn't know how to love myself because I gave all my love to other people that loving myself was an afterthought. And when you love yourself enough to walk away, to take a fucking blow, to, have higher expectations and standards for yourself that a person that did that to you, you know, they can do that to you again. All of these things, when you put that love into yourself and I'm not saying it's going to come easily. It's not, it's going to take a minute. When you put that back in, in, into you, everybody around you is going to respect you so much more. I don't really have respect for women and I'm not saying this in a nasty way, but I don't have respect for women who do so much to, get even and hurt and revenge and, and be mean and, and try their best and hardest to like do everything they can to just hold on to someone that's not for them. It's pathetic and it never ends good. It literally never ends on a good note because your intentions aren't pure and you're not being a good person. I think that you just have to let go and let God literally. Okay. I have a few things that I wrote down to close out this video. Um, essentially to do in your grieving process. So the first thing I want you to do is to write down a pros and cons list of this person. When we are in love, we romanticize and fantasize about this person. And it's very difficult for us to look at this person objectively. I think a great way to heal and move on with your life is to have a genuine pros and cons list of this person in your relationship. You might be surprised on how many cons are on there. I'm telling you and really look at it objectively. And I think it's healthy in your healing journey because like I said, when we get involved with somebody who's it's very hot and heavy, it's exciting, whatever. A lot of us tend to overlook some of their negative qualities and not realizing that maybe long-term this actually really wouldn't have worked. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? The next thing I want you to do is to write down a full journal entry as if you were going to send it to them. Write down a fucking entire dissertation. <laughs> like, I'm saying like the most beautiful written journal entry of how hurt you are, how what they did caused you so much pain, how you deserve better, and fucking burn it. Burn it or keep it, I don't care. But but write it down. A lot of us live in our head. I, I know so many women that walk around with smiles on their faces and they're fucking hurting inside. And it's like, just let it out. Like write it down, talk to your girlfriends about it. If you don't have good girlfriends, you guys can talk to me about it. I'm here, as you guys can tell, I'm making a whole video about somebody's sadness. So I'm telling you, just write it down and get it out and talk to a therapist or a counselor if you have to. You need to distance yourself from this person in every single way. I don't want you to talk to this person. I don't want you following them on Instagram. I don't want you going to their job. I don't want you going in these places that you know that they're gonna be because you wanna run into them. Create distance. There's no way you can move on if you don't create distance. You're gonna constantly be checking if they're you know, following you or watching your stories or if they're gonna show up at the coffee shop at the same time as you and, and you're, you're sorting your entire day around. How are you gonna move on if everything that you do surrounds them? Move on. And it's not easy, but just do it. Actively tell yourself to do it. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves about things. It's kind of like, you know, waking up in the morning, right? Not all of us can wake up at 6 a.m. on the dot every morning. Some people can, some people can't. If you can't, what do you do? You get an alarm clock. It's an active way to continue waking up at 6 a.m. Do the same with your love life and, and your healing journey. Actively tell yourself to not do things or to do things. If you know that you are obsessed with Instagram and him seeing you and you, then remove him. Remove him because it's just not productive at all, okay? The next thing you can do, again, is to just actively try to move on with your life and with no intentions of them running back to you. I know I said that guys do because they do, but do not, do not move on with that in mind. Move on because you have to. Move on because you love yourself. Move on because it's healthy. And holding on to a fucking dead relationship is not going to help you in any fucking way. Number four? Is it my on the fourth one? Let me see. One, two, three, four. I'm on number five. Allow yourself to feel hurt and sad when the feelings come up, because they will. Um, I'm like the queen of burying my feelings. I mean, I am a cancer. I'm pretty emotional, but when it comes to things that are like out of the blue, um, which is very rare, but when I was younger, um, a lot of my breakups were very out of the blue. I remember I, I spoke to this kid at 9 a.m., at 12 in the afternoon, and then by 9 p.m. that night, he broke up with me over the phone, and I was out, you know, gallivanting with my friends, and I remember being shocked. Like, what? You're breaking up with me? We were just talking. Like, do you know what I mean? So allow yourself to feel the feelings and be sad. Do not bury them. Allow yourself to have that emotion surrounding it and then cut it, curb it, move forward. You know, don't bury your feelings because it's just gonna create you to be sad, more sad in the future. Really let yourself go through the, the motions. See a counselor or a therapist to maybe help you through some of the feelings as well. Not all of us have great friends. I do. So when I went through my breakup with Alex, I called all my friends, I would speak to them about it all day and all night because there were certain things that I just didn't understand and there were certain things that I needed to work through. And when I spoke to my friends about it, I felt better. But if you don't have friends, please speak to a counselor and a therapist. There's some things that they see that you don't see. There's parts of us that we are unable to see that they can see in us. Some of us are leading with the intention of this person running back. You can't do that. I know you want to, but that is not a healthy intention to set. Set the intention of moving on and a therapist will reiterate that to you. Like, hey, I can kind of tell that you're, you know, trying to get back at him. No, don't do that, okay? Allow somebody of an objective view and a more educated and, and more wise view help you. And again, I wanna say this because I think it's really helpful, you know, learn from the mistakes that you've made but it's also important that you learn from the mistakes of others so that you don't make them. You know, what's the saying like, um, a smart person learns from the mistakes of themselves, but a wise person learns from the mistakes of others. I have made mistakes in my life that I've learned from, and I've also not made certain mistakes in my life that my friends have made or my parents have made that I've learned from as well. 
I am telling you from experience, I think I have not enough experience that you don't have to go through this to learn this. Don't be running back. Don't be acting crazy. Don't be throwing fits. It don't work. I'm telling you, it doesn't work in a healthy situation. And at the end of the day, we want healthy. We want healthy dynamics that are genuine and true and 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 respectable to ourselves and our self-worth. Um, be kind to yourself and don't punish yourself for anything you did or didn't do. This is not the time for you to be beating yourself up we are so imperfect in relationships, but it's really important that we don't punish ourselves for things that we did or didn't do. It's not productive, so just don't do it. Learn from what you did do that you didn't like and don't do it again. And the last thing is to keep walking when you wanna turn around and, and force yourself to keep moving forward, regardless of how easy it is to turn around and go back. It, it, it's never easier on the heart. I promise. A lot of people like to settle or go back to things that comfort them, but it's a temporary comfort because at the end of the day, you're not facing the reality, which is that it's over. The relationship is over. It's severed. There's, there's unfinished feelings and business there. There's a lot of healing and growing that needs to be done before the relationship can continue. And until you allow those things to happen, it will never be dealt with properly. And I think that that is a sentiment in having and curating healthy relationships between you and other people. If you are a healed person and you meet another healed person, that can create such a beautiful and healthy relationship. But if you're healed and somebody's unhealed, no. And if you're two unhealed people, no. I'm telling you, healing is the, is the journey you wanna take. I'm telling you. Through it, not around it, it's important. It's all going to work itself out. It's so painful to go through a breakup. It's heartbreaking. Trust me, I've been there. I know what it feels like. But the best way to really move forward in your life is telling yourself that you don't want to be with somebody who doesn't want you. Long term, let's just say they say, okay, I'll take you back. I'll take you back. You're going to always be in your head thinking, this person doesn't really actually love me or want me because they told me they didn't. So it's like there's really no easy route, but the best route is the route where you choose yourself. And I think that that is like in itself the most beautiful thing that you could really do. I hope this video helped. It's been a long time since I've been in this predicament, but I think that I shed enough insight and have had enough experience that I was able to really give you guys the truth and give you guys what I know about relationships and how to move forward. I'm gonna also link a few of RC Blake's videos down below because I watch him religiously. So it's just inevitable that there are some things I recited in this video that have to do with him because he has definitely shaped and molded my brain in a way that I didn't realize. And yeah, guys, um, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure that you like um, the video down below and comment anything that you guys want to add and subscribe, of course. And I will see you guys in my next one.